It's not often that I play a game that really blows me away. Over the years, I've played my fair share of great games, but there's only been a few titles that have left a significant impression on me for one reason or another. These games all have some combination of story, gameplay, and music that work so well together that they create an exceptional and memorable gameplay experience. Nier Automata is one of those titles. Developed by Platinum Games, Nier Automata was released in 2017 for the PlayStation 4 and PC, with an Xbox version coming over a year later. It's a sequel to the 2010 game Nier, which itself was a spin-off of the Drakengard series. While I had no prior experience with either the first Nier or the Drakengard series, I was captivated by what I saw in Automata's promotional material. The story looked fascinating, the visuals looked stunning, and the combat looked extremely fun, so I decided to add Automata to my backlog of games. I finally got around to playing it this year, and I'm honestly upset that I didn't play it sooner. This game is everything I had hoped it would be, and more. While it is by no means a perfect game, it hits all the right notes for me. Addictive combat and movement systems, customizable skills and attributes, an epic soundtrack, an engaging story. All of these pieces work together to create one of the best games I've played this console generation. Now, Automata has been around for three years at this point, and it's received its fair share of praise and attention. The game recently hit 4.5 million copies sold earlier this year, which is a respectable milestone for an average AAA game. However, I feel that this game deserves more. I want more people to have the chance to play this game and experience its greatness for themselves. In an effort to make that happen, I'm going to tell you what you need to know about Nier Automata and why I think it's a game you need to play. Before I get into the story, I just want to make something clear for anyone who is unfamiliar with this series. You do not need to have played the first Nier to understand or enjoy this story. Everything you need to know is contained in either the cutscenes, dialogue interactions, or documents you find throughout the game. While Automata does make some references to the first Nier, it is unnecessary for you to recognize these references to understand what's going on. Take it from someone who is also new to this franchise. The story is entirely self-contained. With that out of the way, let me give you the background for Automata's story. In the year 5012, aliens attacked Earth with an army of machine lifeforms, almost wiping out the human race. The surviving humans escaped to the moon where they established a base to recover and launch their counterattack. They created a group of androids known as Yorha who are tasked with destroying the aliens and their machines so humanity can finally return to Earth. After a few thousand years, the machine army has yet to be defeated. Over the course of the game, you will play as three of these Yorha androids, 2B, 9S, and A2. Each character has their own stories to play through, which are pieced together to tell the overall story. Automata tells a very philosophical narrative that touches on the meaning of existence and the uncertainty that comes with it. I don't want to say much more about the game's plot because I don't want to spoil what happens. The one thing I will say is that Automata actually has multiple endings you will need to achieve to unlock the full story. There are 26 endings in this game, but before you get concerned, only 5 of them are true canonical endings. The rest are either joke endings or alternative endings that are not canon for the story. For example, if you die during the opening prologue mission, you'll be given this message, followed by the credits and this title for ending W. Clearly not an actual ending for the game, just something they threw in there for fun. The 26 endings are categorized from A to Z, and only endings A, B, C, D, and E are the true endings. The game doesn't really explain this to you when you first start the game, so let me break it down for you in a way that might be easier to understand. Think of the game's story as being split into two parts, which we'll call Act 1 and Act 2. Act 1 is made up of endings A and B, while Act 2 is made up of endings C, D, and E. When you first start the game, you are immediately thrust into the role of Android 2B, and completing the story with her will result in ending A. If you reload your save file after achieving ending A, you will play through the exact same events, but this time as Android 9S. Even though the story events are the same, there is certain information that is exclusive to each character's path, as well as exclusive missions for each character. Finishing 9S's story will lead to ending B and the conclusion of Act 1. Act 2 tells the rest of the story. You will alternate playing between 9S and another android named A2, which will ultimately result in either ending C or D. Once both of these endings have been achieved, the game concludes with ending E. The game does prompt you with notices about these other endings after completing paths A and B, but for someone unfamiliar with this type of storytelling, it can be confusing at first. However, once you get the full story, everything becomes much clearer, and you realize how great the story is. In terms of the main characters, they are a likable trio that I think do a great job 
job of telling this story. 9S is lighthearted and curious, while 2B and A2 are generally more serious and reserved. However, 2B and A2 occasionally show off their wit and dry sense of humor, giving you a peek underneath their serious exterior. They have great interactions not only with each other, but also with the various characters you meet throughout the game. There are plenty of interesting characters you'll come across, many of whom will offer you some sort of side quest, which can vary between a few different things. While a lot of these missions are simple fetch quests or kill quests, there are some more unique and entertaining ones like a 1v1 arena battle and a race with a floating machine. Many of these quests help flesh out the world and its characters, giving you a bit more insight into the story. All of the quests reward you with money and experience, while some of them give you additional items like consumables, weapon materials, and plug-in chips, which I'll cover in the next section. Overall, the story is a great part of Nier Automata and reason enough to play through this game. It tells a very thought-provoking narrative that I can't say I've seen in any other game I've played. The characters are very likable and there's plenty of side quests to help flesh out the world and keep you busy. The combat and movement systems in Nier Automata are some of the best I've experienced in a game. Aside from just being a ton of fun to play, Automata's combat is easy to pick up and provides a lot of personalization through different weapon types, different support programs, and a variety of attribute enhancing plugin chips. First, let's start off with the three main types of combat. Most of the game will be played like this in 3D. You will be fighting various combinations of machine enemies using a flurry of sword combos, ranged attacks, and special abilities. You also have an evade ability that can be used to get out of the way of attacks or simply increase your movement speed. If you dodge an attack at the right moment, you can actually counterattack with a really cool looking move that changes depending on the weapon you were using. You can equip two weapons at any given time, one in the light attack slot and one in the heavy attack slot. Mixing up light and heavy attacks will create really effective combo moves that also change depending on which weapons you were using. Your companion in this game is a robot called a pod who gives you a ranged attack and a special ability. Some examples of these special abilities include a focus laser beam and a shield that protects you from enemy range attacks. Some of these abilities can be purchased from vendors while others can be found throughout the world. They all operate on a cooldown so you can't just spam them. Sometimes the game will transition you from this 3D format to a 2D or top-down format. This is only done in certain areas or during certain fights but it's a great way to mix up the gameplay. All of your abilities work the same way as they do in 3D, they just now operate in a 2D or top-down space. The second type of combat you'll encounter is aerial combat. Some missions will place you in one of these flight units where you'll need to survive waves of enemies or destroy destroy some objective. This style of combat is actually very similar to the main 3D combat I explained earlier in that you have light and heavy melee attacks, a ranged attack, and the ability to evade. I personally really enjoyed these aerial sections. They provide a nice change of pace gameplay wise and they create some really fun encounters. If I'm being honest, I kinda wish there was a little more of this combat type in Automata. While there were multiple aerial missions, I think they could have included a couple more or at least extended some of the missions they already had. The last type of combat you'll see are these hacking minigames. When you play as Android 9S, your heavy attack is replaced with a hacking ability. If you successfully hack into an enemy, you'll be presented with one of several shooting minigames where you'll need to clear out waves of enemies in an effort to destroy an objective. The only thing you can do in these minigames is move around and shoot. If you take 3 hits, you'll fail the hack and will actually take damage when you return to 9S. If you successfully destroy the objective, you will either destroy the machine you hacked or do significant damage to it. This was my least favorite type of combat. It can get repetitive playing the same minigames repeatedly and it breaks up the far more enjoyable 3D combat. However, these minigames aren't all bad. There's more involved ones that you need to complete as part of the main story where you might need to navigate your way through a maze or take out multiple different objectives. These are much more enjoyable than the standard minigames because they are all unique and require more skill to complete than your average hack. So those are the three different types of combat. What else do you need to know? Well, you can upgrade each weapon to make them more powerful, and you can customize your attributes with different plugin chips. There's different weapon vendors found throughout the game that can upgrade your weapons if you have the proper materials. These materials can be found scattered throughout the world or earned as rewards through side quests. Upgrading a weapon makes it stronger and can actually increase the number of light or heavy attacks you can do in a row with that particular weapon. Plugin chips allow you to improve your stats in some pretty helpful ways. There's a chip that increases your maximum health 
health, one that increases your melee damage, and one that increases the range of your evade ability, among many others. You have three sets of memory that can each be customized with their own combination of plugin chips. Maybe one set is more attack focused and another one is more defense focused. However you customize them, you have a limited amount of space to work with, so you need to make trade-offs on which chips you want to include in a given set. The great thing about these sets is that you can actually switch between them at any given time, even in the middle of combat. This means you can adjust your combat style on the fly, which is very convenient. Another cool feature about these chips is that you can actually fuse two chips of the same type and level to make them more powerful. For example, if I have two evade chips of the same level, I can fuse them together to create a chip that gives me even more range. Generally, this fusion increases the amount of space the chip takes up in a set, so that's something to consider before fusing. Plug-in chips can drop from enemies or be given as rewards for quests. You can also buy some chips at select vendors. The last things I want to cover about this game are the movement system, the difficulty, and the soundtrack. Earlier this year, I played and reviewed a game called Sunset Overdrive, and one of the things I mentioned in that review was how much fun it was to move around in that game, whether I was in combat or just exploring the map. That's exactly how I feel about movement in Nier Automata. Moving around feels so fluid and precise, whether you're fighting machines or making your way through a ruined city. It's so much fun using your dodge ability to increase your speed or just mess around like this. I think some people underestimate the importance of a good movement system in a video game, and I want to emphasize that a big part of why Automata plays so well is its excellent movement mechanics. The difficulty in this game is one of the few criticisms I have. There's four difficulty levels to choose from. Easy, normal, hard, and very hard. The easy difficulty basically has the gameplay for you, while the very hard difficulty has you die in one hit regardless of what hits you. I don't have any problems with these difficulties, mainly because I haven't played on either of them, and because I think it's nice that this game has options like those for people who want them. The difficulties I tried swapping between, and the ones that most people will play on, are normal and hard. From what I've gathered, there are only two main differences between these difficulties. On hard, you lose the ability to lock onto enemies, and you take significantly more damage. Like, a lot more damage. So much so that hard plays much closer to very hard than normal because you will die from most bosses in one hit and many smaller enemies in only two or three hits. Normal is much more forgiving when it comes to taking damage, especially with the right plug-in chips. However, the game becomes significantly easier towards the end of the game on normal. This disparity between the difficulties on normal and hard is too big in my opinion. There should be a mode in between these two that provides a challenge but isn't as punishing as hard. Finally, the soundtrack in Nier Automata is amazing. When I think of great video game soundtracks, I usually think of Nintendo games like The Legend of Zelda, Super Mario, and Metroid games. Other titles like The Witcher 3 and Final Fantasy XV also have incredible soundtracks. I consider the music in Nier Automata to be equal to or better than the music in many of these games. It's really that good. That's all I have to say about this incredible game. A great story, superb combat and movement systems, and an epic soundtrack combined to create a truly memorable gameplay experience. It really is one of the best games I've played this console generation, and potentially one of the best games I've ever played. I don't usually give that accolade to games I've just played until I see if I feel the same way about them years later. At the very least, it's in the running for that title. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more game reviews and discussions.